Okay, so for front end, uh, I I try to make my own guideline, like steps to tackle the uh, uh, system design problem. So this is a video of my uh, of my draft. Actually, this is the first version, and uh, I hope it helps. Um, yeah, and uh, for front end, there will be two kinds of uh, on-site interview. Uh, uh, no, the system design problems. One is about uh, the typical system design. Uh, as far as I know, it should be something about the a, f a, a small part of the s the, the product, like uh, a feature, like uh, the usual like your thing, like a type of head or like a progress bar or something, something like that. So there's not so much thing you want to uh, worry about the the whole picture of the product, the 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 tech stack of that. You just to try to implement a a a, a, a specific problem, which is more more about uh, the, the the DOM about JavaScript, like you're building a small application, only part of the big bigger, bigger one. The other one is product design, like you're at, please design, uh, try to design an Instagram. How would you organize your front end in tech stack? Something like that. It must, it will be a more vague and more how to say. Uh, there will be more uh, things to take into consideration. So there were two kinds of it. Okay. So when we're asked the problem, no matter what it is, we first we need to understand, understand what it is, right? Understand the problem. You must. We must make sure that what what the what the interviewer wants to know, whether we understand the thing correctly, right? So, like say, uh, please design an Instagram. Okay, as far as I know, because maybe I'm not that good at Instagram. I uh, seldom use it. So I'll say Instagram is a service that allows people to upload images and share them and follow each other to see other people's updates, something like that. Is that am I right? Yeah, the interviews my my I might uh, should be on the same page. So okay, now we understand the problem, basic problem. Like like we're going to do a uh, type ahead thing. Well, we need, we need to discuss. Uh, what's the UI and uh, what the interactions are, right? So basically, the basic understanding should be uh, uh, be right. This is the first step, understand what it is. And then we need to decide uh, what the scope is going to be. Well, you cannot design a perfect system, right? It will only be only 45 minutes. So here is very tricky part. You must want to, I think not you, but we, but I, okay? I want to... Uh, pick up the parts that would shy some would make me like uh, shining right so pick the parts that I'm good at don't don't do the parts that I'm not good at so here just uh, take into consideration of two I think maximum two is e enough so uh, the the scope make it small and list up the to do's and not to do but 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 even you're not going to do it just list it up so the interviewer knows, okay, you are uh, aware of the not to do, but you only choose the to do because of the time limit, right? Okay, make it small. Just pick the pick the core part of, of the system or the product and explain that to the interviewer. So so this step is very important. You must check, we must check with the interviewer, say, okay, am I okay to do can continue this line? Okay. If not if not okay, maybe he or she will give you a, give us a hint, and we can change that accord accordingly. Okay, so the so for a system design. So what is the basic goal of this feature? What you want to achieve, right? For the type ahead something. You want to uh, assist the user input something like this, and what is your non-functional goal of this feature, right? Wow. Well, you can implement a feature naively, right? Or fancier with, with those goals like uh, make it instance, uh, make it smooth, uh, make it fast, make it fun, like animation or something. So for the server side, it might be something like uh, my uh, like resilience, some resilience thing. For the front end, there's no such problem as I think. So you would just make it smooth, make it, uh, make it jank free, something like this, make it fun. And what is the data flow and user aid flow? So specifically, it will inter it will 
uh, at, it needs us to list up all the APIs we need. So what would you, what kind of APIs do you need uh, for this specific feature? And what would be the user flow? What, what, where would the user click? And what would happen? So the general use flow, what would it be? Well, you would define the, 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 the feature, uh, the spec. And then what is the MVP? Okay, so this is the core. We need, must list up the core features, like core, core APIs, core interactions, core interfaces, right? So that we can f uh, continue. And then, because this is a small, this is a small pro product uh, feature thing, it might be we, we might be asked to uh, design into details. So it might like uh, something uh, close to coding. Might, uh, it should not be coding, I think. But you may you might be asked to how would you how would you control your state of the UI component? Like there is a progress bar. So what the UI state? Well, of course there will be a idle, right? And not no progress. And then progress in progress and done, right? There were at least three state. So we must know our UI state and understand that correctly. Correctly, and then based on the state, we could separate our logic into a pure UI, the, the data part and the logic part, right? Just like just like if you're using React, we should predefine our state. If you are using TypeScript, we could define our state first, and then based on the we're just adding more interactions to change the state and the UI will be updated accordingly. So we need to separate the UI. The basic rule is save the UI and the data. Uh, no, uh, I mean syncing the UI with data and separate the data and the, the logic, right? So this is very, very uh, important, I think. Separate the state and the logic and sync the UI with the state. And then what is the core spec? It's based on the MVP. So after considering this, con Considering these cases, maybe we could just list up one. Okay, uh, we support this, 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 and then if user click this, we what happen? And uh, what's the edge cases? What the problems we need to handle? Uh, what the what the what the tricky part is? Something like this. So we can def define the core spec. So after considering these uh, detailed questions, well, if it's a product design, it's more complicated. Um, this is just from my own idea. I'm not sure whether it is good or not. So, uh, uh, to be honest, so if I, I was if I am asked to design the Instagram, so I would say, what's the goal of these web web services? After several years of developing web applications, I kind of know. I kind of think that even the businessman, even as the product owner, they don't know the the relationship between between the web applications and native apps. They both say, okay, the more the better, but actually it should not be the more the, more, the better if it's just a waste of resources. So we need first to understand what's the goal of creating this web app, right? Either, either what's your goal? And, uh, and to under answer this question, we need to make sure what's the relationship with native apps, right? If you have already have an app, if the web application is just replica, it's totally the same and spend a lot of resources re creating that. Or it's just a lighter version. It's just the um, MVP version of the app. And after people getting used to it, we will try to persuade them to install the app and, uh, and uh, retain them there. Well, and or if just there's no na native apps, we could just create the native app uh, with uh, uh, not or create an app-like thing, a native app, native like app uh, with PWA or with hybrid technologies. So that's the concern of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the position of our web application, right? So we need to that, cl clarify that first. So I he think here, it's not a thing of, of, of a a ask and answer. It, it should be something uh, assume, right? Based on, uh, say, if you are creating an Instagram, I think, I believe that you already have an app. So I think, we should create a web application which is not the totally the same as the native apps because it's meaningless. So I, I propose we create a, a light version of the native app providing the basic features and it tries to persuade them in, try to persuade the users to install our native app thing. Right? Yeah. So if we get ball, get get like more aggressive, okay, I'll replace the native apps and use the total web technologies. Well, it's not good. Or have a, we have a better approach? Say for an, iOS and Android, we use native apps, or for the 
other platforms like the 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 uh, the, the, the Mac uh, and the, the PCs, there will be installable apps so we could use the PWA so to support that the sp a small uh, share of users. Well, that's reasonable. So we just to say something that reasonable. I think the, I think the interviewers will be glad, uh, be be okay. Okay, and then what's the we're going to target? What what the platform or what support mobile only or su support desktop, support the browser browser level or installable app? And uh, recently, in my personal ex personal experience, uh, things kind of like a mobi mobile first. There's no fewer fewer fewer. Uh, applications are supported in desk desktop design. I think we will just design a mobile design design a mobile one and the, do a little do a little modification modification like make the, the 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 width bigger the larger. So on the on the desktop browser, it still feel like mobile web application, but it's workable. So that's reasonable because in our days, I think like eighty or ninety percent of the access is from mobile. There's not necessarily for a desktop version to exist, right? So that's well. It well. It also depends on the. It depends on the the the, the app's uh, characteristic. If you are creating like a manage manager system uh, for uh, like a lot of input and a lot of uh, a lot of data editing, so a small screen like mobile or tablet is not a tablet is good enough, but mobile smartphone it is not a good option right so i think desktop is this that is desktop first okay and then now become now comes the question whether we are going to spa or do server side rendering thing well it's basically a seo problem if seo is a really really uh concern i think we should support as server side rendering and uh, Google is said to be supported as single page application, but I think that is not good enough. Maybe they, they it's just uh, untrustable. So if SEO is a must to must option, so we support SSR. If not, SPA is good enough. I think, okay. And there are more questions. Okay, what's the volume of the service? Well, it's big or small. Like there's a small application and a few team members, I think you can do whatever you want, right? If their volume is very big, like uh, what my current doing, there will be over 150 line K lines of code of TypeScript. So it's a very huge product. Then we cannot just say, okay, do whatever you want. And uh, it depends on what the team members is, if you are or in-house members, or it's uh, some a vendor or, or outsourcing members still there. We, we that 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 kind of uh, well, well how to say uh, well well uh, make us choose different uh, design patterns for a different part right we'll out we'll handle process we'll create the core part without ourselves with more care but for the non important part like the something like uh, service uh, uh, customer report. Uh, web applications well that could be done with outsourcing so that's still a concern and uh, then at last after considering all these pro questions we can define the, the minimum viable uh, product right we need to list up the core features just like the the, uh, the simpler uh, system design problem we need to list up what we want to do remember we pick up the pick up the pick up the features that we could make us feel good right we could have something to talk with we list up something we're expecting an interviewer to ask us specific questions about that so get familiar with pre uh, uh, get prepared for some specific pattern before before we start with the interview okay i have a list up of several several patterns and i will try to uh, try to put that put the my the, my from uh, the, the patterns i'm familiar with into the list okay and then what is the shining point of this service, and also the and and also the developer uh, experience? Developing experience, well, about the service, well, it's mostly about the product product side. And from my experience, the developer also could could contribute a lot of improvement. Like uh, like the product owners doesn't know about details about uh, so much details on a front end area. We could improve. 
try to persuade them to create more interactions, more animations thing. And the developer experience, while well, it's also about that, like we need to, we don't want us to, how to say, uh, like uh, spend uh, spend a month of time, uh, spend months of time to create a service and we cannot learn anything from it, right? We need must try new technologies to make us in grow at the same time. And the last one, what is the future roadmap? It's uh, it's just like the previous to, to do and not to dos. Yeah, to do and not to do. So here we also need to list up all the to do, uh, not to do. Like for Instagram, you maybe want to do something like a real time the like likes number update, like like what I see recently on Twitter. If you focus on the tweet, the 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 the, the comment num count, the like count will just uh, increment automatically without you doing any interaction. So okay, I'll, I'll try to do this to make it better. Anything the to do and uh, do and to dos. Okay. Okay. Next step is uh, do some assumptions on the background. Uh, I mean, if you are creating Instagram, we must. Uh, this is more about the server side, but I think it's pretty important on this uh, front end also. We should suppo suppose what the DAU and MU is. How many users are, are we going to 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 go, going to uh, uh, try our service, right? Because we are going to like like uh, we're going to collect the errors. And we will use a use a system like Sentry to collect the error, and we need to estimate how many users are going to use our service. And based on our previous experience, I think zero point five of the page views will general uh, generate errors. There will be so many errors you don't like net network errors and everything. So if we are we will uh, try to estimate the page views and the times the error rate, and we will count how many hits are there uh, of our error uh, system. That will, that will, uh, and like Sentry, so we can, well, uh, apply for that space, for that uh, storage, right? Okay, here, suppose how many interactions occur in a day? Well, this is the same. Uh, there will be a lot of tracking code, I think. Uh, they click here and send the event to the Google Analytics and something. Well, so we need to estimate that also. How many how many interactions? Well, suppose like uh, one people will see like uh, uh, spend one hour on our system, and you will go to the detail for like uh, 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 I don't know every minute. So there will be six right six detail pages, and how many likes? Well, I don't know uh, twenty. Just suppose it's twenty, so it will create a lot of hits. Okay, so that's the consideration and about performance we need to suppose that 300 kilo kilobyte is tolerable or something and we need to support and the api part it's maybe handled by, uh, by another department the average api response is about 100 milliseconds something and this will help uh, help us uh design our future uh, system the next next step is about the big picture for the system design uh, for like uh, a small part of the application, there might be not need. There might be no need to draw a diagram. But for a product, I think it is it is required to draw a diagram on, on that. Right? We need to define what the data flow is, or for the uh, or we could just list out the outline. Say to explain to the interviewer if it's enough. It's I think it's acceptable. But diagram must be more uh, much easier to understand. And we draw, draw draw a diagram, and when uh, then we define the data flow to make it uh, clarify it with our interviewer or the user re interaction. Okay, and uh, we here also we need to check with interviewer. And five, this is the very important part. So after we list up the the uh, the the, uh, the the big picture, we need to tackle two one or two specific. Uh, challenges, right? What's the bottleneck is? Where we need to focus on? Like, uh, oh, yeah, need to focus on and uh, to shine yourself here. I think for front end, it's basically about uh, about uh, performance tuning. But I like to address that uh, not only a performance is very, uh, I'll say, is a very vague concept. It's the, if you just take uh, take speed. As a performance, there will be a lot of things to do to improve that, right? Even the server-side API's improvement would help a lot. 
in our uh, real application. So at here, I separate it into two parts. The first one is smoothness, and the second one is speed. I personally would like to separate it because smoothness is not the speed, I think. You see that uh, people have a different tolerance, uh, tolerance level for the speed, right? The for, for the first page to, to, to render, for the first screen render, it might take some time, and that is a speed, right? It's slow. But if you're adding a like fancy uh, loading indicator, like a, like a like a very cool loading spinner or uh, a, a, a some uh, indicator based on the character, it's just it's smooth, right? It's not about a speed, but it's smooth. And I think that's uh, so, something related to like uh, instant feedback. I think you always tell the users that something is going on, but not make them know. Okay. What happened now? What should I do? Just don't stop them. So two parts, smoothness and speed. About the smoothness, smoothness, I think it's going, it's the proper, the, uh, uh, the basic goal is to make it jank free. So I list up some of the concerns, what I'm think, what I think it's useful. One, instant go back. This is a usual pitfall of a web application, especially on SPA. Uh, many people just many applications supports that a uh, list and go to detail and then we go back They are ha having a hard time to restore the uh, per, uh, Vertical positions, right? That's the usual case you can do a lot to like a uh, store the uh, store the scrolling position uh, in, in a, a location state you can try that or some frameworks like ne Next.js will support that natively, but it's still it doesn't work perfectly on some edge cases. Well, suppose if you are uh, re, re uh, calling the API again and it's kind of becoming slow, then the browsers won't restore your scrolling position. And another one, only about a vertical per, vertical uh, scrolling position, there will be horizontal scrolling positions, right? If you are doing something like a carousel, you are having a hard time to restore that state also. Oh, and about images, the images, if you are just destroying the node, destroying the DOM nodes, and the images will be recreated and the request will be fired, right? You can cache, of course, you can cache the image in the browser cache, but still the images will be uh, reconstructed and there will be a reflow, anything like that. Well, about images and another topic. So what I want to, what I want to address is that it's not that easy to create instant go back. Of course, in our application, we're using a page stack, which which is solved this problem once for all, and it's very cool. And uh, I want to sp spend more time here. If you're interested, please search on the internet, and uh, I have to I have to post and to, to introduce how to implement page stack. Okay, if you are not adopting this one, maybe you will try to use uh, store the data in you use Redux or something. It's a global state, so you go back. You, you just avoid re, re, uh, requesting the API, but just to get the data from the memory and then render it. So you, you you can save a lot of time from the API, but you cannot save the time of recreating the DOM, which sometimes if the page is very long, it costs a, uh, a lot of time. And also you can, rather than global state caching, you can just uh, use API caching, right? This is, uh, this is like uh, easy to, uh, like uh, non-intrusive, not not that uh, non-intrusive approach. You just cache some cacheable APIs for a specific of time. So rather than store them all the state in the go a global one. Okay, so this is instant go back, and so and then how do you? Uh, I think we still need to support instant go forward, right? So when I tap a link, I need to see something right away, uh, rather than waiting some time. Okay, but it's difficult. We need to re. We need to fetch the API first and do the UI rendering, so we can uh, improve this. We improve the smoothness by uh, by feeds the user with an instant UI, a new UI, which is skeleton screen, which you can we can see a lot of these applications on the internet. And or we just uh, do it naively with a load indicator, or we just uh, would cut the U cut the page into two parts. The first one is up the fold, and we we render that first, and then. After after it is rendered and and become active, we can start rendering the uh, uh, the uh, upload the fold right part. Well, so this is how to implement instant go forward. And we and third, we need to instant interaction. 
instant interaction, right? Response. We need to we need to say when user typed, we need to give them the interactions uh, right away, no matter what you do. Well, this is related to accessibility. Like we need to must uh, give some give some feedback, like hover state. Well, pe many people uh, ignore that. And also, like we will scroll, we can use passive listeners to avoid uh, interfering with the rendering process. And also, we need to support the design guidelines. Well, uh, for a very good like. Uh, uh, like a product from a large company, I think there will be some design guidelines all the designers know about, like uh, if the, what the button size is, what 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 should it be for action sheet, what the error pop-up is, and the, what's the uh, animation transition for that pop-up. Uh -huh. So this is the three instant thing I want to address. And the fourth five is more like uh, make it the, the, the app more native-like. I think that people will feel it's smooth because it's close to the native app you use, you use every day, right? So even we are working on uh, web applications, it's very important, but people use native apps more actually than the web applications, right? Uh, so they, they're using native every day. If you're, you're creating native-like uh, native -like UI, anything, it will make them feel, okay, this app is very smooth, I'm used to it. And uh, we first we could create it native like animations, transitions, gestures, right? Swipe back or like uh, we could use Lottie to create some fancy animations and the page transitions, right? We don't just replace the DOM like the naive solution with React the router. We could just uh, as I mentioned, we use PageSec to do some sliding sliding transitions and or pop up transitions, something like that. And also the last one is native like your components. Well. Um, well, this is just like uh, I see Instagram. There will be an action sheet, which is pretty cool. It's more like na native, like, and usually it will be something like different menus, right? But yeah, I think it, the, the action sheet is pretty pretty cool. Something like this. Uh, another one is like toast, right? If you're creating a toast at the bottom, inter uh, showing that network is down down or some error happens well that's pretty native like okay this is the for the smoothest smoothness wow i'm pretty bad at this pronunciation smoothness 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 and another one is speed which is a typical performance tuning problem well there are a lot of there were a lot of aspects we can uh we can talk about i will just list up and uh, take a Quick glance at it, okay? The first one is preload and prefetch. Well, we can de determine what the po what possible next step with the user will be. If we scroll, if hover on a link, maybe he will fetch the resources of that link uh, soon, some soon, sometime later. So we could preload that resources and we could prefetch for the next step. And the last one is to avoid the big chunk of JavaScript. We could do code splitting. Well, this is a lot of uh, web applications do. Uh, Facebook has a recent uh, renewal. They have posted an article about that in their blog. So I strongly suggest you reading that. It's very cool about the code splitting part. And we do code splitting also. We will just bundle the most like top three routes that people use for our services. And for the, all the other routes, we'll just uh, do it la lazily, right? And and together with code splitting, we, we don't, we don't, uh, we will not, uh, how to say we won't let the user just uh, wait for some for nothing right well, because the code splitting while well, took extra time to load the script we need better provide them with something better than a load indicator that is the skeleton what it will be and third one caching of course uh, for static resources we should cache it right and for different people around the world we should put the res we should upload those resources on my different CDN nodes to, to provide them a, a faster access to the static resources. And we need to add add the, add the specific uh, cool caching, uh, cache control also. Uh, for our case, we add every, uh, we add the uh, content hash for every static resource. So we, pr we add a very long cache control. Currently it's a uh, one month. And uh, so, and also, not only about the static resources, we could cache for some, uh, for, for some uh, APIs that needs a large amount of calculating, and uh, yeah. 
And another way of catching it is to use service worker. We could provide a more like, but it doesn't matter that much, I think. We could do a refine, refine the caching control by ourselves with a service worker, right? Another one is lazy load. We not only we can lazy load, uh, uh, lazy load the image, we can lazy load everything, right? We could just lazy load a component. Also, like just like the skeleton, we could lazy load it first, and when people scroll it and it becomes visible in our viewport, we start initializing. That is a lazy load. It's a very common common approach to to do performance uh, improvement. And then auto pager, which is for usually for feed timeline thing. Uh, for Twitter, you'd know that when people scroll, 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 and it seems like there's there will be infinite, right? That is because when people scroll up and uh, when that when it is close to the put to the last last item, uh, the application will fetch the API again and adjust the uh, do the paging automatically, uh, prepend uh, append the new items below. So so it feels like there's infinite fee, uh, infinite uh, items. And the set next one is related to where is infinite scroll rather than we just scroll, scroll bottom. When we scroll to very, very uh, deep uh, along the very long page, the items will, so the, uh, a lot of the uh, UI uh, DOM nodes will be invisible, which will be, uh, uh, be above the top edge of our viewport, right? So for that, it will drag down our performance. We could just uh, erase them, erase the DOM node, and, uh, and then and then we use the node element and keep the node count small as possible. And that is the approach of infinite scroll. And it's, so, so it's something like a sliding window. If you, if, if, you, if you think about it, it's just like a wind, sliding window, right? Okay, to just to keep the DOM nodes, which is only visible. And the eighth one is server-side rendering, initial data feed. This is specifically to improve the first paint, right? For first uh, meaningful paint, to the user. Well, the first one we could use SSRH. We just uh, output the HTML directly, which is which is very fast. But how? Uh, but this costs a lot of costs costs a lot of work, I think. Uh, unless you use some use some uh, a mature uh, uh, server side rendering framework like Next.js. Another approach will just uh, put the initial data feed data and uh, output that in HTML. So for the first first. Uh, for the first rendering, we don't need to fetch the API, but get the data from the from our HTML. It will be fast enough, and tonight it will be uh, it will be very useful for applications that needs the data update like real time, like stock, like we're doing right now. We're creating a stock application, so the price will be updated in in an interval, right? And uh, something like uh, what else? Uh, like chat, right? And uh, what else? Like, uh, okay, just like the Twitter like count update problem, right? We need to actually to to modify as less as possible. So the 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 original approach is that just update the things that's within our viewport. So when we are updating the price of a list of stocks, we just to fetch the stocks within our viewport, and then just to update the prices of it, right? So it will just. Uh, uh, help reduce the payload of our API. Okay, and first, this is the some general uh, performance uh, approaches, uh, performance tuning approaches to a web application. Another one is specifically about images. For Instagram, there are a lot of images. I think in artists, the pure text thing is not attractive anymore to like users. About images, what do we can we do? Uh, of course, the first one we need to compress it, right? We need to compress it. Compress it. We need to choose the bad balance without with the quantity and the uh, image size. And then we could do a lazy load. I think Chrome has native uh, support and lazy load native now. And to avoid reflow, we need to cre create a placeholder of the images so that when it is load, uh, the dimension of the images won't change. So the whole page will stay uh, stay untouched. Okay, and then set one is uh, progressive images. We could first send the user with some blurry images, right? Those blurry images could be pre-calculated, and so the you when the user when the user see it will just uh, seeing some images become uh, become uh, a clear and clear from a blurry uh, from a, see some faces from blurry to uh, clear, 
right? It's something. It's something about PNG, right? I think PNG has support that, but PNG has is comparing to JPEG. It's not that a performant in the file size. So I think progressive main images might be a good start. I don't know. I didn't even try it, but I don't I didn't use it. And another one about images that for the sprite, you really for the old days, people use sprite to create the icon, icon, put the icons together and create a sprite images and uh, uh, modify the background positions for each icon. But nowadays, I think let's just use SVG. SVG is cool. It is scalable. You can choose the uh, different size and it will, it just adapt to the uh, different devices with different device pixel rate ratio perfectly and we can even change the color change everything so svg should be used for icons that's what we are doing right now and the last one is caching it's static we should cache it with with browser cache and a cdn cache and of course user svg we should inline it or if for the other images we should support htb2 htb2 right and about api uh, API is a is a hard. I think it's a very complicated topic to talk about. I just uh, just list up something I can think of. The first one is about a data update, right? For just uh, as the uh, uh, as I mentioned about the stock application, there will be update of the prices. So we either report the price of the interval, or we use WebSocket to communicate to with the server. While for the stock stock app, it does not need to be. It doesn't need to be WebSocket because we won't send anything. And the other one is, uh, uh, but we, if you are creating a chat app, uh, we, we need to send something and receive something, right? WebSocket is the only choice, I think. And rather than WebSocket, if we want to listen to the changes like the stock price, we could use a server send event. Like, uh, yeah, just a stream, uh, just uh, listen to a stream and update our DOM based on it. So this is three strategies up there today update and another one is a backend for oh okay not bbf okay i'm sorry it's not bbf it's a b backend for front end so bff not bbf it's bff and what is used is actually it's actually something related to graphql i think because currently if we're a huge project people will tend to connect to different APIs for different part of application. So for front-end engineers, we kind of uh, will collect, connect to different APIs, right? But different people will have different design of APIs. So that's a disaster for us. We, we, we might think like, okay, I'd like some API that will aggregate those different uh, microservice API together. So that will be easily, could be easily used by our front-end engineers. So we create a layer called backend for us and aggregate to the APIs. Actually, we are adopting that, but not doing that aggressively. We don't want to maintain, we, we don't want to maintain a different documentation of the API specs. So we were using the we were using the uh, proxy approach, like uh, we, we could batch request, batch some requests to our uh, backend for front end, and then dispatch those requests to different microservices and get the result and uh, aggregate the result and respond it to our app, our app, uh, our JavaScript. So that's the approach. But also if you're doing background for front end, you could use GraphQL. It's more, I'll just say it's more extensible, it's more scalable, but I'm not familiar with it. I could say just, I'm interested in it. I think it's pretty cool, cool. Especially for those uh, web applications that have a, a lot of different a lot of different UI with the same set of data, like for different UI and for different the platform for native for web, and uh, and the server side engineers could not design a one once for all API API for all the needs, right? So that's the case where GraphQL might be might be uh, might be suitable. But if you're for but if it's a simple web web application and the data is there's not so many complete complicated data, uh, then I think GraphQL doesn't help that much. Okay, that's my personal idea. It's very cool for, so uh, the benefit of GraphQL depends on how complicated your applications are. Okay, the last one is caching. Well, we could cache some get APIs and cache it if, if it is cost a lot to, to calculate and then HTTP2. Okay, so that could, yes. Yeah, it's just help a lot. 
and to add to access our application, I would I would uh, uh, I would mention the real model from Google. So we need to focus on these four uh, met metric called real first R response. We need to we need to uh, when user tap something, we need to uh, give a, a response like within one hundred millisecond. So that it means our application is responsible. Another one is animation. Well, we don't create a jank janky animations. We need to create a smooth one, right? So the frame rate must be good enough. And idle, idle, this means uh, we need to use the idle time as uh, as much as possible, send the beacon thing, uh, preload the resources, load resources, load the APIs, and do some extra work. So just to uh, just spend, spend time in the idle. And then load, right? The first load, you just show some people, shows people something within five seconds. Actually, five seconds is too long for my case. I think two seconds is the most, uh, is the maximum we can accept. Okay, now this is some um, real matrix, matrix, matrix. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, it's not matrix, but it's matrix, matrix about uh, uh, about a real application on the lighthouse. If you open the Chrome Dev Console, there will be a uh, be a score of each met each metric. Uh, first one is DOM content noted. I think you already know it. It's a uh, it's a signal when that DOM is parsed and every uh, sync uh, sync script is noted and the parse and executed. So that's the DOM content noted. And then and then the no load is is when all the resources are loaded and the resources means. The resources parsed that we get get acknowledged of be, before DOM can be noted, and here's a tricky part. Actually, a sync script actually will uh, delay the load. If you're interested, please search. Even if you async for uh, Google Analytics, it will actually drag down the load event. Okay, and then the first con contentful, a uh, contentful pane. Well, the first pane is something appear. That's the first content thing, contentful pane. First to meaningful pane. It means, uh, it mean, means. Uh, above the fold, okay. So, so the first first contentful pane, it's because it's something start to show. The first meaningful pane is that the the contents up above the fold within our viewport are all rendered. So there will be some time lag between them, right? And the first meaningful pane is deprecated, and I will talk about it later. And then speed in index, it will speed in, speed index just the time between the first Contentful paint FCP and FMP, okay, and it actually is a is a is a is a is a how to say a transitional step. It's not what time how long it takes, but also it's gradual or yeah something like that. And the sixth one is first CPU idle. It means ready to interact, and when that is when the user could interact with our application. And then time to fully interactive. Well. Uh, Reddit interact doesn't mean that we can interact fully because some of the nodes were, are not rendered, right? The uh, uh, event listeners are not fully attached. The ready to interact means some of the some of the nodes could in interact, I think. And then first input delay it means when user first interact with our application, how long it waits before the application responds, right? Uh, when, when tap button, the first tap, how long will it take before it shows something? Okay, that's the first input delay. And then total blocking time, it means first contentful, contentful pane when something shows between time to fully interactive. Well, well, full, well, okay, everything is ready. Just come on, man. Something like this. Well, something show and then everything is done. So that's the, and between that, what's the blocking time? The block means, the, fur, uh, the blocking time means uh, the, if user uh, do some act interaction, the delay, right? So the line total blocking is a sum of eight. First input delay, the input delay. Okay, and ten largest contentful pane. Uh, so the first full minimum full pane is actually deprecated and because and then start use use number ten. Why? Because nowadays, just like in my example, we're using a global loading spinner. Okay, it takes up the whole screen. Well, if you say it's meaningful pane, for the definition of four. It's it's of course first one meaningful pain because uh, the up above the fold is already rendered, but it's meaningless, right? It's just a loading indicator. It doesn't show me something meaningful. So actually, the metrics four is not good enough. And uh, Google is uh, proposing the tenth largest contentful pain, 
Wow, it has a has a bizarre algorithm. It will check the dimensions of each part, like the images with blocks something, and uh, it will check that. Check that. Uh, I didn't look in the detail, but something like that. The bottleneck we need to shine ourselves, right? We just show him. Okay, I'm good at this. Okay. When the core challenges are done, I think the interviewers will get a great impression about how could you uh, implement our web, our design a product or uh, do the system design. Now, there's a lot of things that we didn't do, right? So we need to understand the trade-off. And uh, beside this, there will be a, maybe another alternatives like uh, like the GraphQL. Maybe you can mention that. We can mention that. Okay, I'll try GraphQL in small part of our application, and if it goes good, good, I'll migrate it to the whole application, something, blah, blah, blah. And to do, okay, there are some fancy features I want to implement, but I don't have time to explain. Okay, so just list up the possible improvements and details and ideas, just to uh, show the interviewers that, uh, okay, I'm not satisfied with the design I made now. I would, if I have some more time, I could build a more, much more robust, much more fancy system, and will benefit the company and benefit the uh, benefit of the uh, benefit the developer, benefit the community, uh, benefit everyone. Okay. Yeah, just show them you have a lot of uh, to dos. Okay, that's it. That's the six steps. This is the guide I would use to prepare my last week preparation for the uh, uh, system design problem. Okay, let's review that again. First, understand what it is. This is just a rough understanding is good enough, okay? And then we need to decide the scope we're going to design the scope that we're going to talk about in this specific 45 minutes. Just list up the to-do which we can sh show our abilities to the interviewer. And list and also list up not the not to dos. Okay, for the system de design, we need to understand the basics. Uh, list up the non-functional and the functional goal, and what is the data flow, user flow. Draw a diagram if needed. If not, list up the outline. What is the MVP, the most viable approach, and what the state of your imp imp component. What would you set the time separate them in a in different parts like the UI data and versus the logic. And what is this core spec? List it up and start explaining. And if it's a product, it's much more difficult. And at first, I wish you I wish you to focus on the more general concept. It's like the goal of what, why we create these web applications. What's the relationship with native? Which we're going targeting is SEO a problem? And how many members we have? What's the volume of a service? And then we define the MVP and all the features we want to talk about. And uh, okay, what is the future roadmap? Something like this. And also, we need to do some assumptions. That basically, is about how many people are using it, the DAU, MAU for front end, because we need to collect, collect the tracking log, right? User interactions and the error log. So that's what, that will cost us servers, and we need to apply servers based on our uh, pre assumptions, right? And suppose the a threshold of performance, like uh, the, the, the file size, this is called the JavaScript budget, and then the, the average API response, the, is there any slower APIs? Okay, so then we draw a picture. We will create a diagram for the system design for a small feature. We list up the outline is good enough, but for a product, we maybe a draw diagram is good and good enough. A, a, a better, we draw data flow and how the user interacts. So the data flow, very important. Okay, and then we need to f tackle the specific challenges, right? So for front end, it's basically two things. About one, make the web app smooth as possible which means make it native-like as possible. And then next one, improve the performance, make it as fast as possible. For smoothness, it's just to go try to implement it as close to the native apps as possible, which means instant go back. This could be done page stack, global state, API caching. Go forward, we could use skeleton loading indicator and above the fold splitting. And then instant interaction response, well, that's that's more related to the uh, uh, design guidelines, accessibilities, and passive listener or something. And then native-like animations, transitions, gestures, well, it's just making more fun and more uh, used to the the, 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 uh, the standard design guideline like for native apps, native apps on and, Android and uh, iOS and for materials for Android, right? And native-like uh, UI components like the toast, like the what? Like, a, like action sheet, something like that. Okay, so this is a smooth, 
And then this is a speed. It's specific specifically for performance, right? Preto free prefetch, and then avoid a big chunk of JavaScript, just close splitting, of course, together with Skeleton, which in React you could use the lazy and suspense, suspense and something for suspense, right? Okay, and then cache the static resources, and we could also cache it with the service worker, and uh, we use lazy load for not images, but all the components, and we just use AutoPager to, uh, to create an immersive, immersive experience, and uh, infinite scroll to avoid the too long pages, and we could use the SR to initiate a feed to implement, in, impl uh, in, uh, improve the first load, and then update the data only with a viewport to uh, avoid the, the uh, to reduce the data payload of the API. About images, we could compress, we could lazy load, and we could do progressively. And we should use SVG for icon and do caching. APIs is still with well, are different strategies about the API request like pull for updated WebSocket for chat app and SSE and the BFF uh, BFF not BBF BFF. We could aggregate the API or either in a maintained way or just a proxy way. And with BFF, maybe you could adopt a GraphQL if your UI is very complicated. We could take advantage of GraphQL. And of course, cache in HTTP2. And the real model is the Google's model to assess uh, application's performance, which is response. You must be instant, right? Animation, the animation must be uh, smooth, idle. You can use the idle to use idle time to do extra work and load. It must be it shouldn't wait for too long before user goes away, and the the matrix metrics not matrix metrics will be dumb content loaded and load. They, and to please understand the difference between these two, at first contentful because uh, contentful pane something emerges and some meaningful pane above the fold. Speed index it is between three and four. First CPU idle, it means it's ready to interact some parts. Time to full interact. So everything is ready. First input and delay with your tap input. How 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 long we did it response? And total blocking time. The total time of eight from first something shows and everything is ready. And ten largest contentful pane. It's the new version of first meaningful pane because if you a splash screen or node integrator, the four first meaningful uh, pane is meaningless. And the largest contentful pane is. Usually good, but it's still it's not good for some extreme cases. And then the last one is just a just a a a, a recap of a to do. So what should we do if you have time, right? Have more time. Okay, so I'll try this. I'll try that to show that the users are uh, to show the info that you are not content with. You will never be content with your design. So you will you will try to improve the system. Uh, uh, always. Yeah. Right. As uh, uh, yeah. There's no end. There's no debt. No end for a perfect system. So there's only better, no perfect. Okay. So that's all for for these my guidelines. I uh, hope it helps. Actually, I will try to use this guideline to have uh, to actually do a two uh, uh, system design problem. One is about small feature, and then the one is the product design. Okay. I'll try to in apply these rules and to see how uh, uh, how far I can go. Okay. So one week left. Okay. Yeah. Good luck to me. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.